Hello everyone, so you may remember a couple of days ago we saw a massive Ukrainian drone hit a Shahed production facility in Tatarstan, Russia. So yesterday, Ukraine shared this image on screen now of the drones in question, and these are the big daddy of UAVs. Just check out the size of them. They're pretty much light aircraft in size. These have been given the name E300 Enterprise. So they pretty much are actual light aircraft which have been converted into drones. There are differences between models depending on the base aircraft used here. The one that hit Tatarstan was based on the A-22, an example image of an A-22 shown here. It's a Ukrainian ultralight aircraft. It's unknown how many of the A-22s are available for conversion. We can see on the image that was shared by Ukraine yesterday that these ones are different models with a different base aircraft. Check the different nose, the supporting struts of the wings, and then the shape of the tail. Ukraine also shared some details about them. So these have a massive 300 kilogram warhead and a reported range of 3,100 kilometers. I guess that range depends on which aircraft is used for the base though. By comparison, the Shahed drone used by Russia has a warhead of up to 50 kilograms. So these enterprises are going to be pretty deadly. So let's check what these can possibly hit. Now we don't know where Ukraine actually launches these from, but I'm going to use Kharkiv as the example here, just to give a general idea. So that coverage is insane. Now this is roughly done, and done in a straight line. I find it unlikely that these drones will just fly in a straight line, as we'll need to manoeuvre around built-up areas, around radar sites, some defences and the like. So, I think it unlikely we'll see anything hit at the 3100 max range. But still, within this circle, there are some massive, massive targets to be hit, which are likely. Firstly, the Crimean Bridge will be easy pickings for this. The Enterprise wouldn't even break into a sweat to hit that. So, let's get that out of the way first. I'm going to switch to this graphic here. This shows the different refineries and processing plants of Russia. Red are the ones that have been hit so far. So, up until now, it's pretty much been within that 1000 km range. So the Enterprise now opens up to all those refineries between 1000 to 2000 km. It's seen a bit better on the original image, as it's less compressed. So, let's turn to that. So 11 refineries are in that bracket plus a handful just outside the 2,000 km bracket, which will also be able to be hit by these drones. The big one, you can see is marked with a 21, for 21 million tonnes, is Omsk. I believe this is just within the range of these drones, but it may be a refinery too far, as again, these will need to manoeuvre and that sort of thing to reach a target. But that would be a major target if Ukraine could hit it, it's a massive, massive oil refinery. Let's switch back to our range image. So I'm just going to mention a few of the key targets as there's way too many to go through in more detail. Well, the first one, Olenya Air Base, possibly the most important target here, is the area highlighted in red. That's now hittable. This is where Russia launches its 295 and 2160 bombers from to attack Ukraine. So this has to be considered a major target. Then of course, we have Moscow. No end of targets around here. Ukraine has hit Moscow with drones before, but not with anything this size. So we have the Kremlin itself, that would be pretty embarrassing for Russia, government buildings which have been targeted in the past, and then the air bases of Shakalovsky and Kubinka. Shakalovsky was attacked by Ukraine before, damaging a couple of transport aircraft, but that was with the small drones. One of these beasts hitting an aircraft will do so much more damage. Moving back to the ocean, this also brings Nova Rossisk into range. Ukraine could potentially hit this with other drones before. They've hit further afield in the past. But it's unlikely that one of the smaller drones would actually cause too much damage to the ships. However, a light aircraft packed with explosives, crashing onto the deck of a Buyan M or one of the submarines there, will certainly put it out of action for a while. It may not be as effective as a storm shadow, which will penetrate the deck to detonate inside. These drones appear like they don't have that penetrative ability, and will just detonate on impact. But, 
Here is a photo of a Boolean M. I'm using this as an example because Russia uses these to launch caliber missiles, so they'll be a prime target. So one of these Enterprise drones smashing on top of that radar will pretty much obliterate it. Even if it won't be joining the Moscow at the bottom of the sea, it'll still be needing a trip to Nurse Joy at the Pokemon Center to undergo repairs. And, and again, there are many, many targets. The refineries are covered. Numerous, numerous air bases which are with, with, no. numerous air bases which are within range. Some of which have been hit before. Some of which are further afield and haven't been targeted yet. Not to mention ammo dumps and barracks and staging areas and headquarters. So these drones, if Ukraine has them in a decent number, are going to be very interesting. Now, one potential target area, which would be a huge embarrassment for Russia. Launch from near Chernihiv in the north of Ukraine. These big drones can easily reach the most northern part of Russia here, up near the border with Finland. And the launch is possible from here. I don't imagine these need an actual runway to take off. I expect a rapid deployment using trucks to transport them onto a road and then using the road as a makeshift runway would suffice. So I expect these can be launched from pretty much anywhere. So reaching here isn't an issue. And check out all of the naval bases in this region. This is near Murmansk and home to the Northern Fleet. These ships aren't directly involved in the war in Ukraine of course. But I don't think Ukraine would sniff at the chance to take out a submarine or a frigate this far away. They are military targets after all. And aside from being a major embarrassment for Russia, would also force Russia to divert more SAM systems and jammers to defend the naval bases here from attack as well. Every S-300 or S-400 system based here is one less which is going to be protecting areas in and around Ukraine. So I definitely would not rule out a long-range drone attack on these bases here. It's near here actually where Russia's sole aircraft carrier, the Admiral Kuznetsov, is alternating between spontaneously combusting and being repaired. So Ukraine could potentially use these to do Russia a favour and put old Yeller out of his misery as well. And again, whilst not an important target to do with a war with Ukraine, it would be a massive embarrassment for Russia having one of these drones hit its rusty old aircraft carrier. Now, before I finish, given Ukraine's newfound long-range drone ability, will Putin make an appearance during the Victory Day parade this year? Though, can we call a solitary T-34 a parade? On one hand, it likely knows if he doesn't show his face, everyone will know he's scared. On the other hand, there's a very strong likelihood now of Ukraine sending a drone over, given the new capabilities. Last year, Ukraine could hit Moscow, but they hadn't done it much, and not to the same degree. They certainly didn't have the drone capabilities they have now. Now, Ukraine has a large number of long-range drones with a 1,000 km plus range, ones which can easily reach Moscow and hit targets and have a proven success in hitting targets. So Moscow and this Victory Day parade is seriously at risk here by Ukraine's new drone capabilities. And the world's media capturing Putin running for cover, brown stains on his kegs as a Ukrainian drone circles over the victory parade, is something he wouldn't live down. So I don't think he'll show. I think he'll announce that this year, for reasons completely unrelated to Ukrainian drones of course, he'll instead attend a victory day parade in Siberia or something like that. But May 9th, it's definitely going to be interesting to see if Ukraine launches a drone over it. Even disrupting the parade because of a drone will be embarrassing for Russia, even if it doesn't attack any targets there, just one circling around or being engaged by Panzer SAM systems. It's going to make Russia look a bit silly, especially if the cameras catch Putin running for cover. So that's it for this video. Hope you found this video interesting. Now before I finish, a quick mention about a fundraiser for Nadia. Her husband is a mechanic who repairs vehicles for Ukraine. Is currently working on repairing this car, which got damaged by Russia. Once repaired, it will be delivered to a unit of 144th Brigade. She asks if we can help out with a few donations, so the PayPal link is in the description. Thanks very much, and take care, everybody. And the car. So my husband will be working on the body of this car and mechanical issues. 
and our friend already started working on the main problem electrical wires because a lot of cords are damaged after the explosion so i cleaned yesterday glasses like i mean broken glasses from inside of the car here it is thank you for your attention